Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well today. Boy, have I had a busy week this week. I've had people over to take a look at the furnace, which turned out to be absolutely fine, but they came over three times to be sure about it. It's just a learning experience, I suppose. You know, you get a technician that hasn't done it for as long as um, some of the others, and they just notice something that they think is wrong, but it's really not. So, had a little scare with it, but uh, obviously it's working fine. I haven't had any issues with it since uh, it was put in about six months ago. Uh, but they wanted to come by and do a checkup on it, so that is checked up on, and it's obviously working absolutely fine. So that was the first big thing of the week, because they had to come over uh, three separate days. Um, and then, um, at the beginning of the week, I decided, well, I've saved up enough for something I've wanted to get for quite a while, and uh, finally went ahead and got it, and we'll see that here in a second. And uh, thirdly, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the back of my car that I want to share with all of you that I think is um, a pretty cool uh, find for dumpster diving, which I don't do too often, but when you drive past the same dumpster every single day and you see something unique, might as well pick it up. So we'll take a look at that too. But first, let's take a look at this thing. While I said it was over here, it takes up a little more space than that. It's the Apple Studio Display, the certified refurbished Apple Studio Display. Now, obviously, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the Apple website, you can find in very small text, refurbished and clearance. And if you go there, you can get some really good deals on Apple products. Of course, they're refurbished, but the refurbished words in Apple's realm are way different than refurbished from, like, any other company. Their refurbishing process is amazing, and I've never gotten anything from Apple Certified Refurbished that was dinged up, scratched, um, had dead pixels, nothing like that. It's always been immaculate and in amazing condition. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be exactly the same. And I mean, being a very expensive display, it definitely saved some money. Now, why in the world did I pick this thing up? Well, this monitor works perfectly fine. There's no issues with it at all. But I've really wanted to have a matching Apple display and pick one up to go along with my desktop Mac. So, here it is. I've been using the 27-inch LED cinema display here with the Mac Pro for quite a while to do some of the older videos, and it pairs really well with the Mac Pro. And at work, I have the Thunderbolt version of it, same exact thing, and it pairs really well with that Mac Pro. Now, I have no doubt that this will pair really well with the Mac Mini over here. The funny part is, is that this is way more expensive than that M1 Mac Mini, but my idea here is that this I can use for a very, 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 very long time because it is expensive, and um, I'll upgrade the Mac Mini as needed. And I've just been so impressed with the older Apple displays. I've seen these at the Apple Store and at Best Buy, and I've wanted to get one, as I've said. Another reason I've wanted to get one is pretty much all of the desktop Macs that I have in my collection have a matching Apple monitor. That's just how I've acquired them, especially the old PowerPC ones. And for whatever reason, I want to continue that. I want a matching monitor for the modern Apple machines as well. <clears throat> so another reason why I wanted to pick this up. Anyway, let's get to this box itself. So, being an Apple certified refurbished product, it doesn't come with any fancy pictures or anything on it. It comes in a basic white box and just some basic wording on it, which is fine. You don't really need to be walking through the mall with a big expensive box that says, hey, look at this thing. Why don't you come grab it from me? You know, so a, a basic white box is a little safer to walk through the mall with. Either way, we do still have which I was very impressed, this like braided handle to carry it around. I, I wasn't expecting that on a refurbished product, but sure enough, here it is. So, there's nothing here. Both sides have an Apple logo, 
and there's nothing on the back. But what we do need to do is peel this tab here. Okay, so we just need to lay it down now. We'll make sure it's in the camera. Sure enough. Okay, so this is supposed to be a real fancy box. We'll see. Push the uh, handle in there. Move the light out of the way. Yeah, would you look at that? That's like a, I mean, I guess it doesn't have a lot of spring to it, but it definitely has something going on there. And we have arrows here to push out to the side, so I suppose, uh, I suppose we will do that. And look at that, it just unfolds. Boy, packaging engineering most certainly is a thing. And we have the display itself, which I suppose we'll just grab here on its sides pick up set that aside for right now and we have a little packet here if um, I can figure out how to open it okay we got a fancy cable here with Apple's fancy packaging yet again that is most certainly a very thick USB-C cable, but I suppose, I mean, it is Thunderbolt 4 or whatever. It's not just standard USB-C, and there's about a million specifications of that, but you're doing all kinds of stuff with this cable. It is nice that it's braided, though. Short, so you're going to have to want your computer on the desk with you. And let's see what's in here. Oh! Oh! I was not expecting Apple stickers with this. They're black ones. How interesting. Especially with the refurbished product, they still give you the stickers. And of course the display itself. That's pretty cool. I was not expecting some of that stuff to come along with the refurbished product. If I can even get it back in here. We got the box out of the way and we have some type of it's almost like a fabric-y paper or something going on here and on the back we have our power cable right here I'm sure there's a way to get this out without um, totally destroying it talk about engineering again now, a lot of people have complained that you cannot replace the power cord on this thing. And I don't see why that's such a big problem. Now, sure, if something happens to the power cord, how in the world are you going to replace it? Well, I'm sure if something's going to happen to it, it's probably going to happen down here and not necessarily right here. Now, if you want to get creative with it, you know, you just get rid of the bad part and uh, splice on a new cord. Sure, it doesn't look nice, but you know what? It gets the job done, and it's going to be behind your desk anyway. But again, why is the cable such a big problem? Let's take a look at something else. So, sure, this cable is attached. You can't pull it out like you could. Well, I mean, you can pull it out, but it doesn't have the standard plug on it. You just have to pull really, 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 really hard. But it's not made to come out. Now, let's take a look at this thing. It has a power cable that does come out. But what else is that? What is that? That is all your communication cables. USB, mini display, um, the charger for your laptop if you choose to use it. And does that look removable? No, it's not. So I don't get what the big deal is. Apple has done this forever with these cables that you cannot remove from the monitor. Now this would be even worse. If your communication cable gets damaged, how in the world are you gonna fix that one? That's not as easy of a fix as a power cable that has four wires in it. So all the people that are complaining that there's no way to, you know, pull out the power cord. Apple has been doing this 
for a long time. So get over it. Anyway, I'm done with that. Let's go ahead and um, take the fabric stuff off of the display. Looks like we just need to pull down here. Okay, and the rest of this just comes apart. And there we go. And there's the back of it. I did not go with the adjustable height stand. Again, a lot of people like this adjustable height stand thing, but um, I don't understand that too much. I mean, obviously, if you want an adjustable height stand, um, you can just put some books underneath it, or you can get a stand or something, and that moves it up and down to your desired height as well without paying the extra money to have this adjustable height stand deal. Now, that was another thing people were upset about. Why in the world doesn't this have an adjustable height stand? Well, do you see that one behind it? It certainly doesn't either. So what's the big deal? They've been doing that forever. Okay, back to the monitor. They definitely have a bigger Apple logo. You can definitely see that one. Let's see here. See, we got the, the old one and the newer one. On the back here, we have our one Thunderbolt port. That's the one that you have to put the... A braided cable in that it came with and then the other ones are just USB C3 point something Looks like we have a microphone right here, and I'm sure there's other microphones throughout We do have some vents here at the top and there's vents at the bottom naturally, too So let's spin it around it Looks like we have one more thing we have to take off here. I'm surprised they still put energy star on stuff I don't see any scratches or anything. The only thing that I see on it is dust that's falling or a little bit of sticker residue from that thing we just took off. But other than that, I think we're pretty good. Now that it's all unboxed, I suppose it's time to bring it over to its new home. Okay, so we have some things to unplug here and move around. Now, this, as I've said, has been a perfectly fine monitor. I have been super satisfied with it. And the funny thing is, is that this monitor has something that that monitor doesn't have. And that's HDR, high dynamic range. Believe it or not, this monitor has it. At least it said it did on the box. Um, and that was like a $350 monitor. And that thing, if I didn't get it for the refurbished price, would have been $1,600. It doesn't have HDR. What in the world is that, Apple? I don't understand that bit. Anyway, that's the only thing that I'm giving up. So this video isn't an HDR. I changed the camera on my phone to just do standard again, which I suppose is better for most people anyway. Not everybody has a HDR display unless you have a newer cell phone or something. So anyway, this display here, the LG something or another, has served its purpose perfectly fine. But we have some cables here at the back that we need to undo, and it looks like I zip tied them to the back of the monitor, so I'm gonna need something to uh, undo that. So on the back here, we have a whole bunch of different ports. We have some HDMI, a display port, power, and I'm assuming that's like audio out, so that whatever audio is coming through your you know, HDMI, you can put it out to something because this doesn't have speakers built in. Now, I have the same monitor at work again. That's funny. I have this one at work and that Thunderbolt display. Well, one's for Windows and one's for Mac because I wanted them separate. And uh, the one that I got for work does have built-in speakers. It has USB-C for plugging in the laptop that I've been given at work and uh, works great for that. So I'm definitely going to save this. Probably see if it fits in that box, I guess. I suppose the other thing that we're giving up are the little iMac G4 speakers. Now that was a fun thing to put together and they sound great. Now one of the problems that I've been having when doing video editing on this machine is that this being connected through Bluetooth, sometimes there's a bit of a delay. It's not exactly on time with what's being spoken. So 
having the built-in speakers in that monitor is going to be a nice little touch. Plus, I'm looking forward to trying out the microphones. I'm sure they're not going to be like high, top quality, best thing in the universe. But you know what? It's better than um, using the microphone that uh, comes built in on something else. So we got all these cables, but the problem is I can't do anything with them. I got them all tied up down below so that we have nice cable management. Obviously, we need to change that. So we have to pull this thing out. I don't know how much cable we have. Oh, the light's in the way. I'll figure it out. For the best look, it's always important to cable manage. Let's bring it over. Right there. And there we go, all set up. Let's go ahead and see what we get. It looks like it resized or something from 4K to 5K, but it looks like it recognized it. So let's see what we got. Over the past 20 minutes, I've been listening, trying out the camera, looking at all the pixels on the display. This is a pretty cool monitor, and I'm really happy that I saved up and finally acquired one. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's see what else we can get into today. As I said earlier, I have some things in the back of the car. So let me go get those. Okay, so what in the world is all this stuff? They're most certainly old computers. It turns out the business next to us at work was getting rid of all of these and they just threw them all in the dumpster. To be safe about it, I did ask them if I could have all of this stuff and they said absolutely. So here it all is, including three tube monitors that um, aren't sitting here for obvious reasons. They take up some space. One of them's in the garage, and uh, two of the other ones are at work. There's a matching monitor to this Compaq. There is an Acer, which I have out in the garage, and a Sony Trinitron. There was a fourth monitor as well, uh, but it didn't work, so I gave that back to them to recycle. Anyway, this is what I took home. All dumpster finds, and one of them does work. That one right there. I have it... Well, I had it set up at work for the guys to play around with. It's a Pentium 3 running Windows 98 Second Edition with a 10 gigabyte hard drive. I believe the processor is 500 megahertz and it has 128 megabytes of RAM. When I first pulled it out of the dumpster, it had 64 megabytes, but as you'll soon see in these boxes, there were some extra things laying around in there too. So I upgraded the RAM with what I found in the dumpster. And the guys would play around with it, you know, the old games and stuff that were on here. There wasn't too much of anything else on here. Um, just a pretty basic install of Windows 98. So that one, uh, the guys had some fun having memories with. But obviously we have some others here. So let's take a closer look at um, what we all have. So let's first take a look at what's in this box. We have two keyboards. This one has the really big plug on the end. Um, I forget the name of that. And it's a Samsung. It's obviously been well used. Quite heavy, but not as heavy as this next one. This one has some weight to it for sure. And it also has the big connector on the end. I want to say AT style keyboard, but maybe I'm wrong. This one is a model K, or I'm sorry, FKB4700 series. Uh, oh, Fujitsu. Interesting. But this one's definitely got some weight to it. Very heavy. So those are the two keyboards in this box here. I'll just set them back in there for now. 
Okay, box number two. Here we have a power supply with a broken plastic switch on it here. It's um, 135 watt. Not sure what it goes to. It doesn't fit in any of these things that I have here, but I thought I'd dig it out of the garbage too. Maybe there's something in it I can use, or maybe I'll need it down the line. Too bad the switch is all busted up. But uh, yeah, power supply. And in here, we have a whole bunch of just random stuff. So there were some ram sticks here, and I'm not sure what this one is. This one's got some different length pins on it. But we got some ram chips here. I, I put these in these little baggies to try to keep them nice because they were just strewn about uh, in the dumpster. And these longer ones here. And of course, cables. Got to have cables. One power cable. One really thick power cable. Some type of scuzzy thing, I'm guessing. Another power cable. Someone wanted another power cable. Here we have a power supply, which I'm pretty sure is for a printer that was in there. But I thought I'd take it because you never know. Maybe you'll need a power supply like that, whatever it is. And uh, here we have a zip drive that's mounted to this metal piece here with some double back tape. So I'll get that off of there somehow. Obviously got smushed when it was thrown in the dumpster, but who knows, maybe it's still good. Now we're running out of space again. Here we have the cable for the big monitor that didn't work. It goes from VGA to this older style. Again, I forget the name of it, but I thought I'd keep the cable. And we got this funny mouse here that plugs into one of these computers. I think it's this one that's sitting on it here because it has this uh, interesting mouse connector. Most certainly not a standard uh, PS2 mouse. Here's a baggie of screws and a blanking plate for one of the machines. Some type of, what looks like serial to VGA adapter or something. We got a hard drive, 1.2 gigabytes. Amazing. Look at how thin it is though. And it's got these special brackets on it to make it the same height. It's different. Got some switch here. I thought, you know, I don't really have a use for it, but it's a nice metal box. You know, it could be used for a project or something. Got a whole bunch of cables, nothing too amazing there. And uh, this mouse I brought from home here to play with the computer. And here's just a standard PS2 keyboard. I don't like these with the little backspace, but it worked. Uh, to power up that one in the corner that we just took a look at. So that's all that was in this box. Every time I touch these things, I get more and more dirt on my hands. I'm sure they've been in storage somewhere in their shop for a very long time. Going through the specs of the machines, I suppose we'll start with this one since we already went over it. It's got a Pentium 3, 500 megahertz, 128 megabytes of RAM, a 10 gigabyte hard drive, and that's really all that's in there. I'm not sure what brand this is. It's like Plus CPI. Tried looking it up online, couldn't find anything about it. It's the most basic beige computer you've ever seen in your life. Now, the interesting thing about it, though, is that you have to take off the front cover here to take off the side panel. The side panels don't come off the back. You have to take off the front and then take out the screw and then it slides this way. Different. Now, this one um, is very tall. <laughs> But it does have a brand name on it. Asus. Interesting. Look at that. They got like a... Uh, I can't tell. It's the horse with wings. Can't think of the name of it. But we have the front here. Looks like some type of display for the processor if you use the turbo button. And that's really about it. It's just a very tall case. <laughs> very tall. But as you can tell... 
the side panel is coming off. So let's go ahead and take it off. And here's the inside. So at the top we have nothing but air. Um, that's the best accessory really is just air. And then we have the power supply here. And the motherboard. It's got some type of processor on it. Really, I don't know too much about these older ones. But it's an interesting motherboard. It has like a slot and then you have a CPU socket on it. Not really sure uh, what's going on with that. It's got a bunch of dirt on it. Some type of connector there. I don't know. Anyway, we'll try it out, naturally. Hard drive of some type. We have some different cards here. Some type of video card, audio. Well, let's take a look at the back. So we have our keyboard and mouse. We have USB. So I mean, it's new enough to have at least USB 1.0 or 1.1 or whatever. Pretty typical ports, nothing here. Um, is it just missing? No, it's just not there. <laughs> we have our video, our audio, and it looks like a modem and an ethernet card. So that's all that's going on in here. Oh, uh, this case isn't in that bad a shape. It's just this foot here I can't get to stay. And now that I look at it, it looks like half of it's broken. So, yeah, probably when it got thrown into the garbage. But that's okay. It's here. We'll see what we can do with it. And we have a floppy drive. We have one stick of RAM. It looks like another one or a couple were taken out uh, just because the things are flipped open like that. So that's the inside of the, what was this again? Asus, really tall computer. Next, I suppose, would be this Compaq here. Compaq Presario 5000 series, as you can see. According to the sticker, maybe something's changed. I don't know, I kind of doubt it. It has a Pentium 3, 733 megahertz processor, 128 megabytes of RAM, 11 megabyte video card, 30 gig hard drive that is no longer within the machine. I'm sure they took it out. DVD, ROM, CD, ROM. So I guess, what, both of these it came with? Or, you know, I mean, you can do both with whatever. A modem and, let's see here, an Ethernet card, I suppose. Well, I suppose that's a date. 515 of 2000. Have a little cue for Compaq there. Again, it's in a little rough shape. It did take a tumble into the garbage after all. We have USB on the front, floppy drive. This panel's coming off. I've tried to get it on about a million times and then gave up. We have two sticks of RAM. I'm sure it was upgraded at some point because one's um, height is different than the other. Of course, our processor, our two cards. So this has, um, graphics on the motherboard somewhere I suppose because yep we have the VGA on the motherboard so there's the ports on the back I don't know what in the world this is but that's Ethernet interesting see so yeah, how the hard drive would have lived up here um, but they've since removed it like I said I'm sure just a uh, keep it safe or whatever store you know their data makes sense that's not a hard thing to replace we do have everything else though and it does boot up i have been able to get the machine booted up uh, of course there's nothing to boot to but it does at least get to the prompt where there's no operating system found so that's the inside of the compact bersario here so we have these two machines left, and I think these two are the most interesting, at least for myself. So this one here was in many different parts, and I've pieced it together the best I can. On the front, we see it's made by MSI. Now, of course, they make a lot of gaming stuff nowadays, but uh, this looks to be one of their first products. We have a Sony drive here. Of course, our five and a quarter inch floppy, if I'm correct. And some type of tape drive, I'm assuming. We have our turbo button, which is going to turbo us up here. We got our key lock. I don't have the key for that. And our reset button and power 
down here. So, we'll spin it around. Take a look at what's on the back. So there's a serial number, the power supply, and the different cards that are installed. So, this power supply, I don't believe is original to this machine, because when I found it, it was just sitting in it. It wasn't even secured. I put these screws in to at least hold it in place for the time being, um, but it doesn't work. I plugged this in just to see what it would do, and the power supply just makes a really high-pitched noise. So I'm guessing a capacitor or something is just no good in this power supply. Of course, we have the sticker here. Um, to Apollo. I'm not sure what that is. We have video, and this is for that weird mouse that I was talking about. It plugs into here. These two cards were not inserted in this in these slots. Um, I actually found them separate, just laying in the dumpster. So I put them in here. It's the only machine that had open slots for it. And of course, the whole top here comes off. Taking a look inside, we have our various cards and a 486 Intel DX processor. Now, when I first saw this, I saw this socket right here. There's nothing in it. I'm like, oh, well, something's missing. And in the dumpster, I found another one of these processors, exactly the same. And I was like, oh, well, it must have fallen out of this socket here. And of course, while taking it out of the uh, dumpster, uh, the pins got smushed on one of the corners. So I bent them all back, but that processor doesn't fit in this socket. This socket's too small. So I don't know, maybe this motherboard did two different size um, processors and you just populate whatever one you want to use. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but we have the, the card here for the mouse, this Hercules, I'm guessing the video card, some type of IDE interface for the drives. We have our RAM down in there. Looks like only four of the eight are populated. We have our drives here on the front. And I don't think this has a hard drive. I don't see one anywhere. So I'm guessing it didn't. And those connectors for the motherboard were not plugged in, but I plugged it in and uh, yeah, it's just the power supply just makes a really high pitch noise. So I'm guessing this one didn't have a hard drive in it, or it did, because we do have this cable here that's going nowhere. Maybe that 1.2 gigabyte drive was in here. Not sure, because this one was in a whole bunch of pieces. But that's the look inside. I find this one the most interesting, because it's so dense inside. And I love the display here at the top with the green megahertz readout and this power button. That is awesome. So I have tried to turn this thing on. It turns on, you can hear the drive spin up and that's it. There's no video output, nothing. And I'm guessing maybe something got jostled around inside and just won't show anything on the screen. So I'll try resetting everything in it and, uh, or reseeding everything in it, I should say, and see what we get. Now, I'm not sure if this was built custom or a certain company made it, but there's nothing here in this little logo section. We do have another one of these locks. Another one of these, I'm assuming some type of tape drive, our uh, three and whatever inch floppy, our five and a quarter inch floppy, and we do have a disk drive on this one. What was it three and a half inch? And here, we have some information about the machine that they wrote on it. I'm guessing these holes they drilled. It, it doesn't look factory. I'm guessing they added this handle to it as well. They probably used it around their shop to program or do whatever they were originally doing with this machine. Um, but that's whatever they wrote on the side there. And here's the back. So we have video of some type, I'm assuming, because that looks like a VGA connector. We have like an audio game port card or something, and then another one with the 
same kind of looking plug on it. They did put an Ethernet card in here again, and there's that interesting, like, um, oh, it's like coaxial or something. Some serial card. That one, they wrote game on it. And what's that? S2. Power supply. Thankfully, this one doesn't make weird noises, so we're good there. That's it on the back. Of course, you plug in your keyboard there. Very simple. So let me take the, the cover off here. Inside the case, we have this label. Not entirely sure what all the information is, but it is information. And here's the insides. I told you it was dense. This thing is packed with stuff. Here we have a hard drive that's literally just sitting here. I'm guessing that's how they used it or something, because there's no way it would have been mounted anywhere up here like this. It was plugged in like this, too. Western Digital. 1994. 540.8 megabytes. And then we have another one here. To the side. This one is 212 megabytes and was made in 1992. Of course we have our drives here all up front. Power supply is pretty much blocking everything about the motherboard so I can't tell what's going on with the motherboard back there. Um, or what processor it has, but there's most certainly RAM installed right there. And um, something. So, I guess we'll just leave it at that for the moment. That's the inside of this one. I took the drives out to reduce the power load. And this is what we get. We have fan on the power supply. We have a 50 for the megahertz. That's really about it. Now this does open and close. And you can reset because that light comes back on like you're just booting it up. But we get nothing on the display. And this was the same thing with the um, old tube monitors that I was testing it with as well. Um, the card, I reseated it just to be extra safe. And that's where it's plugged in on the back. Not entirely sure. I'm sure it should show something. I don't know if you need a boot disk for it to do absolutely anything at all. Um, I thought it would at least, at least do something. So I find if I take all the RAM out except one stick, I've only tried one stick so far, we get this three beep, beep code. Maybe I'll add some sticks and see what we get. When I have two in, it stops beeping, but we still get nothing on the screen. I suppose that battery could be a problem. It is a little corroded on the top and bottom, but it doesn't look like it's leaked anywhere. But maybe it's one of those where you gotta have at least some power going from the battery for the thing to start. Put the green switch machine aside, and we'll take a look at this one with the 486 inside. I took out the power supply that was making the weird noises and put this one here just to see what we get and let's find out. Oh, got something on the display here. Okay, something, we hit F1, and uh, we got this colored screen thing here. Obviously it don't fit too good, but uh, we got something going on. Hey, that's a lot more than the last one. Maybe the power supply in the last one's bad too, I don't know, but we're good here. Huh, interesting. It's got a whole calendar. We did get this far, so here's some more information. Here we're using the other graphics card. 
And, well, we did have something on the display. I don't know what it's doing now. Um, well, there were, or was, information on the display. Everything appears to be working. Just need to get this hard drive to be recognized. Let's see what this big one can do. Oh, that sounded good, whatever that was. Oh, well, we got something. Hmm. Let's see here. Set the megahertz of the processor speed, and uh, now we're booting up into Windows 2000. So the results for the moment are, this MSI machine boots up and appears to work fine, just the power supply is bad. This really cool machine turns on, but doesn't do anything else. We got to do that three beep thing. Doesn't recognize the hard drive. Well, I never tried it on that one. This is the one that didn't recognize the hard drive. I tried it both ways on the middle connector and the one on the end. It wasn't recognized, but the rest of it seems to be fine. And then these three over here, the one that we just saw running Windows 2000, it's obviously password protected and the administrator account doesn't seem to let me log in either, so we'll do something different with that. And this one needs the hard drive, so I didn't even boot it up for you guys here right now because there's not really much to see other than the specs that I told you on the side. And this one I didn't turn on. Um, it's the uh, Pentium 3 running Windows 98. It works just fine. So that's where we're going to leave it for right now, um, and we'll continue on later. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.